One elite team is out to save lives. There's no medical crews on scene yet. No ambulance is required. We've just been called to a road traffic accident and the reports are that one of the patients is not breathing. These are the men and women who work for the air ambulance. It's taken the hospital to the patient. Open your eyes because it's easier for us to assess you. Okay. Uh, you can focus on me, you all right? Yes, yeah, spot on. Require both carriageways closed now. With highly qualified doctors on board, air ambulances bring a hospital intensive care unit to the roadside. We have the skills to stay and play, not scoop and run. Yeah, at the end of the day, it could be our family lying there who needs help. Funded mostly by public donations, air ambulances respond to over 14,000 call-outs a year. Without the public raising money for us, we simply couldn't operate. There you go. Yeah. It's really, really important to be a team when you're out there. And working with some absolutely brilliant guys. No mind that bollocks, get the kettle on. You do need the banter because you do see some things. It's the best bit of the day. I absolutely love my job. <laughs> Let's have a good day. Durham Tees Valley Airport. The crew of the Great North Air Ambulance get ready to start their day. They can be called out anywhere in a 9,000 square mile area. From Cumbria to Tyneside, Teesside and the Scottish borders. On shift, Dr. Dion Arvid. Five days a week, he's a consultant in emergency medicine at the Royal Victoria Infirmary in Newcastle. At weekends, he's on call, bringing his skills and expertise to the air ambulance. Patients are swearing and complaining about questions when they look triage. A good day for me would be being busy. Um, I don't particularly like being sat around the base waiting for calls and doing nothing, twiddling my thumbs. Dion's like the cold spring. So we have a little sign on the wall that says Tigger or AR. <laughs> he's a good guy. He's very positive. He's a great doctor. But he's just full of energy. I think I put it down to the fact he drinks kind of Mars bar chocolate for breakfast in the morning. Brent off, I think sprang through the ceiling. <laughs> Come down off the roof, Dior. <laughs> All he wants to do is go out and help to save people's lives. T side air desk. Is the patient at the farm itself, do you know, or are they? Part of the paramedic's role is to answer the phones and decide whether or not to deploy the helicopter. No worries at all. I think given, given where she is, um, we'll set the helicopter off. The advantage of having a paramedic on the desk is that we were able to draw on medical knowledge and experience to best deploy the aircraft uh, to the patients that need us most. They'll be overhead in about 10, 10, 11 minutes. A young girl has fallen off her horse and broken her leg. Uh, the aircraft's on its way, mate. Helimed 63 is heading to a remote location in the Pennines. Deal. Autopilot. T side air desk. Hi, Heather. Right. Yeah, it sounds it sounds pretty serious. They're on their way. Yeah, Mike. Uh, you've got a divert. Can you start heading towards South Shields, please? When you're on your way to a job and you get diverted to a different job, you usually suspect that something big might be about to happen. 
This is a 17-year-old male who's fallen down the stairs, is semi-conscious, but also has a neck wound as well. Uh, but sounds like there could be uh, quite a serious incident. There's an update. Uh, crew were hanging. Uh, they've got there and immediately asked for your assistance. This uh, doesn't sound like a straightforward job. If he's got a neck wound as well, it sounds a bit like, uh, what's going on? Job at South Shields sounds dodgy as out. Thanks, Mike. I see some horrific injuries, um, some horrific scenes. There is a certain degree of patient where they're so badly injured that there's only certain things will save their life. Hello, which house is it? Next door. Next door. He's fallen into the glass. Oh fuck, right, okay. There's blood everywhere. Yeah. Right, let's have a look. Mike? Yes. Just chuck us a size four blade, size eight tube. Come on. He's totally shut down. How old's this lad? So he's falling There's no time to lose. I'm there as a trauma doctor to apply my skills for one reason, and that's to try and save his life. Mike. Yep. Bougie. Bougie is it. Next to you. Tube, Mike. Tube's coming on. Oh, yes. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Right, got it. Right, got it. Thank you. Bougie out. Bougie's coming out. All ready to go. He'd run out of blood um, to pump round his body, so um, he'd lost his pulse. No output? No. Okay, can we we'll start CPR? <laughs> Right, let's go ahead. Sleep on progress. Thanks, Mike. Understood. Um, that last call was uh, the the crew are now doing CPR on this young guy, so um, they've uh, lost his his output. His heart stopped. Thank you. Can I have some adrenaline as well, please? You're going through what your emotions would be on scene and, you know, I guess you, you focus as much as you can, but you know how desperate the situation is. Well, just keep it running. Second fluid back on. Yeah, that's still not going like yet. Go. Still nothing. Go again. <laughs> okay, go again, Mike. <laughs> okay, run the fluid again. Yeah. Cheers. What happens if the person who was injured would be someone that I knew, one of my family or friends? You know, what would I want? 
uh, for them and you know you've just got to try your best and do everything for people. Hold it there please Mike. BF can you shock it please? Shock. Yeah charge up. Yeah. I'm gonna leave it closed. No I'm gonna leave it closed. Go. Shock. Yeah. Shock. Okay. Go Mike go. Sarah, just on now. Move that. Right hold it there. Has he got central pulse? Check femoral, please. Again, Mike? Yeah. Yeah, go femoral. Yeah, I've got a crotch as well. Okay, we've got an output. Keep bagging him. Stop the fluid. Okay, we need to get him out and down now. We got an output back on the young lad. Then we obviously then faced with the problem of how do we get him out from the very narrow stairway that he was in in the upstairs of the house. Can you put pressure on this, but just very focally in the middle of it? Yeah. You got it? Yeah. I'm going to speak to Andy. Air desk. Right, I've got a 17-year-old lad who's fallen into a sunbed. Uh, the tube is smashed and it's gone through his left side of his neck. Um, he's hit his jugular and crotted teeth um, and essentially bled out and arrested. Um, we've got vascular control and we've got an output back. Yeah, Dion, got that. I'll ring the RVI. That's all I'll need, mate. Uh, Jay's standing by. Cheers. Um, just tell him it's really bad, Andy. I will do, mate. Take care. Did you get that, mate? Right, OK. So stand by for that, buddy. Yeah, we just need extrication. Yep. So can you just sort out everything to get us out? Yeah. You OK there? Yeah. Whatever we do, we mustn't lose this line, otherwise we're screwed. Mark, it's Andy, Great North. Mate, we've got a really, really bad job coming to you, OK? I don't know if you can think of anything to speed the process up to get him down to A&E, but whatever you can think of, mate, do it. Guys, just bring him this way. We'll stand him head up, but he can't be head up for long, so we've got to get downstairs quickly. Okay? Wait. Keep coming. Keep coming. Sorry. Is everyone ready? Yeah. Okay. Ready, steady, this way. Lift. Brilliant. Right, and get him down the stairs. At all times, we had to keep pressure on his neck wound because um, if we release the pressure, we'd obviously start bleeding again. Yeah, just keep your hand out the way. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Let's get him on the stretcher. Stop there. Right, guys, we're at the end of the street and left. To the right to the very end. Right, far side, yeah. He goes on feet first. Yeah. It was very conscious in my mind that one, we had to get him to hospital quickly, but also that he could re-arrest at any time. Feet first. Feet first. Quick start. Right. Okay, I've got that. Right, starting. Okay, we're all going to be all back and we're secure. And one comes. And it is Hello again, element 63 Alpha. Let's go ahead. We're at uh, one minute from the uh, RVI. Mike, everyone's standing by and ready for you. Okay, okay, man. Over. okay go. Straight down, yeah. My hand was pressing on that patient's neck all the way down with the transfer to the helicopter and then all the way into the hospital. Clear the corridor, yeah. Right. Before we do anything else, he's got a grey cannula in his right arm. Can someone put blood on it? Blood on the right arm. 
OK. 17-year-old lad who's fallen into a sunbed. The tubes have smashed and they've gone through the left side of his neck. He's had about a six-minute arrest. He's had three adrenalines. He's had three and a half litres of fluid. And um, we've got an output back. It's uh, in and out of PEA, but he's oh. now got a very weak central pulse. How many stairs did he come down to? We don't know if he fell down the stairs or whether he stumbled down the stairs with his neck wound and then collapsed. We've no idea. I haven't protected his neck because I can't. I've got vascular control. He's got cell scores on. I've got control. Do you want to uh, carry on doing that? Yeah. Oh. Get one or pain. Okay. Just take control of that for the minute. Yeah, you need it. Yeah, got it? Got that? Yeah, okay. Okay. As a doctor, I'll do everything in my power on scene to try and save someone, no matter how bad the odds. But no matter how hard we try on scene or you know, in the helicopter on the way to the hospital, things can still go wrong, uh, but we do our best and that's all we can do. In the heart of southern England, the Hampshire and Isle of Wight Air Ambulance serves nearly two million people. One of the busiest air ambulance services in the country, it's called out between three and five times every day. Oh, should I do that? I know who I am. Hospital consultant Dr. David Sutton has been part of the team here for six years. I've actually got personal experience of how useful the air ambulance is because I was out on a job two years ago. I actually got run over myself and had my leg fractured and shattered in three places. So I flew out in the front of the air ambulance and flew to the hospital in the back of it, lying on the stretcher as my own patient. So then when we landed and they wheeled me out, everyone in the hospital could see I was on the trolley, so they thought I was an exercise. <laughs> Stand down, everybody. <laughs> Scalpel. Check. Forceps. Check. Drill. Check. We spend a lot of our time in the air base, making sure the aircraft is all set up, the equipment is checked, so when we get to a scene, we don't have to worry about, is the right equipment in the bag? We know it's there. Search clear working. Check. So all we're left with is a direct challenge of delivering care to the patient. Once loaded, Helimed 5-6 is effectively a mobile ER, carrying 180 items of life-saving kit. That's, that's me. <clears throat> Helimed 5-6, over. Helimed 5-6, over. A drop at the top end. Uh, about 4 or 15 feet, we think, on a, on a ship or off a ship or a crane of some sort. Roger, I'm at 5 6 standing by. Okay, chaps, if you jump in, I'm ready to start. Copy the traffic, and we'll be lifting in 60 seconds, 5 6 out. Okay, and lifting. 2767, contact London, 134, that's 4125. Goodbye. The crew are heading to Southampton docks, where a sailor has fallen from height. We go to incidents in all manner of places. So I've been in the bowels of ships, we've been in the heart of crashed aircraft, massive car wrecks in the middle of forests, on the beach, in the sea, you name it, we've been there. The land crew suspect the sailor has broken both ankles and may have sustained neck and back injuries. So they require a doctor to do a full assessment. Right. Hours out for cranes, please, chaps. Yeah, You've got the yeah. 500 footers to the right. There are high cranes adjacent to the uh, incident. Looking. Got oh, that ship coming as well. He's yep. big. I've you got an go ambulance here. Visual. I've got a visual. Good, visual? good spot. Yeah, hold on. Oh, 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 looks like the incident is on the ship. Okay. 
I've just got the water on the overshoot there. Thanks, I'll let you know if we land in it. Well, thanks, uh, 274. What's your destination? Yeah, we're good for us. Uh, destination of uh, outbound to uh, now for Pumper. Coming down. Okay, guys, it is on the ship according to Mike. Yeah, it's actually on the deck. You can see a cluster of people. Five, six alphas on the ground. Thank you, Mike. It's the gang flag. Right there. Yeah. Warm from up here. Right. He's managed to sort of correct himself mid flight. He's landed on both feet. Okay. Uh, didn't hit his head, no loss of consciousness. Bit of a deformed ankle. This yeah. Hi, I've been Dr. Sutton, I'm one of the doctors with the air ambulance. Just checking for us. Where are you from? I'm Russia. Russia? Yeah, we have a Russian anaesthetist in our hospital. So, do you have any pain in your neck not, at all around not here? Not pain okay. here, not pain here, not here. Just Thank keep you. your head nice and still for me. Any tenderness there? I don't think it's okay. Good air entry, all areas. Ivan, how, how painful are your ankles out of ten? Approximately five. Five, okay. Five. I feel the pain here. Yeah. We we'll give you something for the pain. Painkiller, morphine. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. For the pain. The problem is getting him off the ship because you can see how high up we are and the access ramp was about that vertical. Every job's different and sometimes because of the unusual environment you have to be very creative about how you rescue the patient. So we have to think outside the box and sometimes have some very unusual ways of rescuing people. The guys have offered the use of the crate. We need it. So that might be a way to do it. If we could get him in a scoop as a basket stretcher or crane him over the edge. I haven't, I haven't seen it, so but they have uh, so they that might be it. <laughs> I didn't spot it. He seems quite happy with that actually. I'm just hoping they don't drop that hook on his head, because that would be a bad thing. Ivan, in this case, was very stable, and we weren't very far from Southampton, which is the trauma centre, so the sensible thing to do was to transfer him by road. Thank you. What makes the air ambulance special is that you've got a combination of, of exciting pre-hospital care and flying. So if you like flying and you like exciting medicine, what's not to like? A couple of things we have to do routinely. One is wash the turbine blades so they, they get crud built up on them. And so we wash the turbine blades. Crud is a pilot word, isn't it? Crud. Crud. Polite word for shit. Ready to go. Ready to save lives. Four zero seven. The crew have been requested by another air ambulance team already on the scene of an incident involving a seriously injured cyclist. Uh, landing lights and strobes. All good on and out. Numbers, doors and harnesses. I'm just strapping in. OK, and lifting. Two, two, seven, eight. All copied. Roger, Mike. The patient in Maidenhead, the one you're going to know, the 50-year-old male, found off his bike, unwitnessed crash, bad head injury, and combative. Um, two, four, on scene, paramedic crew, and are preparing for RSI. Over. Okay. 
An RSI is a rapid sequence induction. It's a general anesthetic. The patient is put to sleep and given drugs to paralyze them. If you're going to keep a patient an anesthetic in the field, you have to have a doctor there because only a critical care doctor has the expertise that you need to do that. How far we got to go, mate? Uh, two minutes to go. And I take it there's a helicopter there as a clue. Yeah. Could be somewhere. Yeah. Might be a red one. Oh, I got him. Rafa's what's there with you going through the stuff? Okay, guys, pre-landers, please. Pre-landers, run out. Bet. <coughs> Landing lights and strobes. All good, on and out. Okay, just coming forward and down. Past the trees behind. Thank you. Over we'll on your left. Looks we'll like the tail there. Yeah, tail's good there. Yeah, I do that. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. good. Clear behind. Thank you. Okay, guys, you are clear to do what you need Roger to do. Is, uh... Paramedic Clive Stevens has prepared as much as he can for the general anaesthetic. But the procedure can't start until trauma doctor David arrives. Hi. Hi. Hi, David. David. Um, Hi, Clive. Dennis, think 50 ish year old. Yeah. Okay. Found at 15.40. Right. Um, okay. Come off his bicycle. Yes. I think I can see where. We think it must have been high speed because he had a very severe head injury and a very severe chest injury combination of those two together made it a very serious situation. Dennis is semi-conscious and agitated. Both are signs of brain trauma. However you die, you die from lack of oxygen to the brain. So everything we do is to preserve that flow of oxygen to the brain. And that's what they do in intensive care. What we're doing is, is bringing that process forward, maybe by an hour or more, and starting it on that towpath next to the River Thames in Maidenhead. Uh, so, Rolls, Clive, it's your job, so do you want to know what we'd like to do? You might be different intubation, looking at the shape, no yeah. neck, small chin. Yeah. Okay. So I'd go just with a large blade and a bougie. Do you want to do the airway? I'm happy to. OK, well, if you take the airway, I'll do airway assist. So Clive took on the role of, of managing the airway. He was going to put the breathing tube down. Pat was drawing up the drugs and preparing the equipment, and I had to direct the whole scene. Yeah. Dennis? Hi. Hello, mate. Dennis, Dennis, it's OK. So he comes up. OK, Clive, so tell us when you're ready. It needs to be fairly quick here, it's going on fairly rapidly, so I think we need to get this done. The reason you anaesthetise somebody who's been seriously injured is you have to control the airway, the breathing and their circulation. If you don't do that, they can get low on oxygen, uh, their blood pressure can drop and that will double the mortality, the death rate from a head injury. So if you can intervene early, you prevent the ongoing damage to the brain and you can increase the survival rate. Back up a bit. OK, can I have the bougie? Bougie in. Tube on, please. OK, okay ventilate. Good air entry. Good air entry. Good air entry, all areas. Well done, everybody. Can we take the photo now? Although he's now stable, Dennis is still in a critical condition. Okay, so monitoring. Yeah. ECG. Yeah. BP's on three minutes. Yeah. Um, SPO2, we've got. No. Hey, reading, no trace. I'm happy with that. It's a 12 minute flight to Oxford's John Radcliffe Hospital and its neurosurgeons. That's good intubation, Clive. Didn't look, no, terrible. Thank you. Didn't look easy. I'm very proud that medicine has evolved to the point where we can deliver advanced techniques right to the patient in their home or by the roadside, and, and that just so dramatically increases their chances of survival. So we'll be coming in 
about two minutes. A really rewarding day on the Air Ambulance is a day where we work closely as a team saved a life or you made a difference to somebody's life and that's what makes a really rewarding day i'll see you david thank you thanks Clive. that's a good, good job, job wasn't it yeah very good yep cool <laughs> all right come on then let's go <laughs> Paramedic Colin Clark is starting his shift. Beautiful ride in. Not too hot, not much traffic. Oh, glorious. Colin loves his motorbike, it's his little baby. Hello. Is it broke down? Uh, he's always cleaning it, tinkering about with it, and looking at ways to improve it. Oh, that's my pride and joy, that's my baby. Yeah, I'm already, I'm already for service. There, I'm a little stupid speaking. Right. What uh, injuries has he got? Right. I'll set off. A motorcyclist has been critically injured. He's on the far side of the country. It is Workington, just on the on the bridge. Fuel is good. We have 500. Okay, great. Thank you. The 70 odd mile. All right. Yeah. Everybody has something that they find difficult to deal with. One of mine is motorcycle incidents. Being a motorcyclist, uh, I know what they've been doing. I know they've been thoroughly enjoying themselves, and it's just been cut short. And then we've had to come out to pick them up, unfortunately. Helimed 63 is travelling over 70 miles to get to a patient in Cumbria. Cyclist, is it? Yeah. Um, so he's come off his motorcycle and got no details of injuries. Have they come back with any details yet? So reduced level of consciousness. Six feet, go ahead, sir. I've had an update from them. Um, patient was unconscious. And now I have a reduced level of consciousness. But it was uh, 88.0 miles per hour. Oh, into a fence. Roger, that's all I've just done to you, isn't it? I'll have to be up there, man. Yeah, no problem. It's 7.20 pm and the light is fading. The problem at night is not the flying, it's the landing in unfamiliar locations. We have to have enough residual light to be able to see wires, pylons. By the time we get over there, um, it's going to be certainly deep dusk, if not getting dark proper. Guys up. Yes, I think there's going to be a lot of obstructions around here. Okay, up. Yeah, Colin, uh, just had an update. Apparently, this uh, is a motor racing circuit that you're going to. 
Um, if you give me a shout when you're 10 minutes out, um, I'll contact them and they'll make sure any racing stopped. Just two seconds, just two seconds. Hiya, you alright? Is this lady awake? Sorry? He's awake. Um, Hello. Chris, 31 year old male, he's left the track, uh, gone through a wooden fence and then hit a breeze block wall which is probably about five six foot behind it yeah. five six foot behind it chris yeah. hello mate how are you feeling yeah. okay my name's dion i'm on the doctors off the aircraft okay do you feel short of breath at the moment which side's hurting just all in the middle of my chest in the middle of your chest okay <laughs> just say 99 for me yeah. and again Okay, that's fine. Deep breath in and out. Is that sore? Yeah. Any pain down this side? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're worried Chris might be collecting blood in his chest from his broken ribs. It is possible for us to perform a procedure by the roadside and drain the fluid off, but as long as he's stable, it's safer and better for him to fly him in as he was. Can you quickly chuck me another line? Chris, I'm just going to pop another needle in your hand, OK? Where Chris was, uh, was in the region of 100 miles away from the nearest major trauma centre, but uh, thankfully, because we're in a helicopter, we can cover the distance in a fraction of the time that you could by land. Relax, good man. Little scratch. Brilliant. There we go. Awesome. Yeah, brilliant. Okay. Fabulous. Okay. He's got bilateral air entry and he's saturating the event. Well, he's saturating fine now there. Um, I think we'll just transport him as is. Chris, what we're going to do in a minute, we're going to load you in the helicopter. Yeah. Okay. And we're going to take you to one of the, the major trauma hospitals. Yeah. Okay. James Cook in Middlesbrough. Nice. Right, I'll just jump out. Helicopter? No. No. Right, get him out. Oh, no, yeah, we'll be away straight away. Right, round the far side, guys. Yep. He goes in feet first. It's good to get the support of the general public and it is vital to allow us to provide such a good service to the north of England. If you just swing around so we can walk straight off the end. Yeah, there we go. That's fine. All the unstrapped from the stretcher. Hey, go ahead, Colm. Yeah, 35, 35 minutes, James Cook, 31-year-old male. He's come off his speedway bike. He's crashed into a fence then it appears into a concrete wall. Uh, brief loss of consciousness initially. He is now conscious. GCS 15. Head, chest, um, clearing pneumo, um, left arm. 
You all right there? Good. How you doing there, Dion? Yeah, I'm getting there. Getting there. Brakes are on. And lights are on. Lovely. And checklist completed. Yeah, good in the back. Hi, it's Stuart from the Air Ambulance. We're going to bring a patient to you at about uh, quarter to nine, about 35 minutes' time. Radar's gone to 1,000, and a radar. It's a second bite of, of life, it's a second chance. And uh, it made me feel, hey, I've got another wonderful life and a wonderful family, wonderful uh, friends, and uh, I'm just going to make the most of this now. Here, down lot three greens, brake are on, accumulator is forward pressure 150. Are you okay there? Yeah, good man. When I got to the air ambulance, the whole crowd were making a, a real big noise for me because they thought I was going to be in a bad way. I got more of a cheer for that than I ever had for winning a race, so pretty much like my head's telling me to stop but my heart, because I love the sport, I've done it since I was 12, you know, I've still, you know, got that, that inside me, which I probably will for the rest of my life, so, you know, it's, it's got an end one day, but I don't want it to end yet. We save hundreds of lives every year, but there's nothing worse than losing a patient. All we can do is keep trying to save as many as we can, whenever we can. You've probably lost a couple of units of blood ah. into your broken leg. Her chance of this injury killing her are probably around about 50 per cent. Hello. Hello. Oh, no. It's good, well done. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, there. Her wrist was almost ripped off, but really that's a secondary priority. What I need to do is make sure that woman lives.